Well, hey everybody, uh, Pastor Dave here along with the venerable Brandon Hutzel. How are you today, sir? I'm doing great, even though I don't know what venerable means. I don't either. I can spell it, I can say it, but I have no idea what it means. But I've heard others say it, which I think it's cool. So I'll take anyway, it. Anyway, it's not vulnerable and venerable, but anyway. Of that too. <laughs> yeah. I'm Good blessed. to see you today. Good to be seen. So uh, we've been studying the book of James now for months and I love this book. It's this Practical Theology 101. James is kind of funny. He does not, like, organize his thoughts like he's teaching in seminary. But rather, he's just throwing out big truth in, like, it's, it's like, scattered, you know. Yeah. But that's the way life comes at us, right? Like, we don't really get to compartmentalize our lives in one minute. You're dealing with the kids. The next minute, you got to deal with the dog. And then something comes up at work, and then you're in traffic, and then, hey, it's lunchtime. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the way life comes at us. It's pretty scattered. But uh, the past couple of weeks, we've been kind of pulling out a few verses about, number one, friendship with God, and then friendship with the world. Uh, and that's where we're going to kind of focus at today is, is this friendship with God. How do we develop that? I know you've been walking with the Lord for many, many years. Yeah. And I know you're probably like me and probably like everybody else. There's been times in your life where you probably felt like your friendship with God was tight. It was strong. It was deep. And then maybe other times, not so much. So what are some things that you've discovered to kind of help you uh, cultivate that friendship with God. Yeah, you're very right, Pastor Dave. There has been a, an ebb and flow of, of intimacy with God throughout my uh, life of faith, probably more than a couple of decades at this point, uh, that I've been seriously pursuing Christ and our Heavenly Father uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and there are things that surface in Christian culture that are trendy Maybe things that you can try to apply to your life, but then there are there are timeless scriptural principles and truths that that the that Christians and that the church has been really applying for centuries now, um, and the and they're the four go tos um, which we all need to b just remember, and they're basic spiritual disciplines of the faith, right? And then we'll talk a little bit more about you know, specifically how I might apply them in my experience, but they're, they're the usual prayer, right? Praise and worship, um, Bible study, of course, and fellowship with other believers. Yeah. So these are the big, the big four that we all, the big four spiritual disciplines that we all need to remain committed to. So when I think about fellowship with other believers, for instance, um, if you and I have a shared acquaintance, uh, say Charlie McCloskey, um, he may, as a friend of you and a friend of me, invite us to do something together. And just simply because he's a shared acquaintance, we have a shared experience. Yeah. And the old timers would call this kindred spirits, right? You, you may come across someone who you don't even know, a stranger, and recognize the spirit of Christ in them and on them. So this, the importance of uh, remaining in fellowship with other believers, whatever way you can do that. It's a little bit hard now during COVID for yeah. many, but it's important to cultivate that. But what happens is you have, uh, you can help to fan the flames of friendship with Jesus with, with, with another person who's a friend of his as well. Yeah. You know, um, funny you mentioned that. I was just uh, talking to a newer lady in our church, just a great lady, and appreciate you getting to know her. She's uh, been he coming for, I don't know, a number of months now, but again, you mentioned COVID and, yeah. you know, complicates everything. Um, and one of the things she mentioned to me, she said, you know, I feel like I, I really need a mentor, and, you know, uh, and uh, first of all, I was blessed to see that she would even recognize that mm -hmm. in in her life but one of the things I mentioned is hey is you know COVID we we hope we're in the downhill of this and as some normalcy starts to come back to life I really encourage you get into a small group because what I found the best way to to find a mentor or a friendship that's really what a mentor is is this this friendship that is stirring you on to spiritual growth yeah. is just get around some people 
<laughs> you know, just get, get out of that isolation, get around some people, and get in that group, and you'll naturally start trying to, you know, form a relationship with, with someone you're, you're kind of, you, you just feel that, that kindred spirit. You feel like, hey, I, could, I think I could learn from that person. I think I could do life with that person. And, yeah, it's been huge in my life. Simply getting around some other men who have helped me uh, want to increase my fellowship and my friendship with God. It rubs off on you. Yeah, it really does. Um, Solomon, Solomon wrote this in Proverbs chapter 18. A man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Right, And then James kind of echoes this idea in chapter 4, verse 8 of the book of James. He says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So one of the keys, I believe, to developing friendship with God um, is to make ourselves to be friendly toward him. And what does this mean? I don't know. What does it mean for, what does it mean for, for me to, to label someone as friendly to me? Yeah. Uh, kind to me, giving to me, desiring to be around me. Um, just think about what it means for someone to be friendly to you, real practically, yeah. and then be that to God. Yeah. Um, consider him. Be considerate of him. Give him your thoughts. Um, be willing to give to him and approach him uh, at, at times when he maybe isn't approaching you. And I know God's always pursuing us, but... The, the idea is, in uh, what's the word? Um, initiate. Initiate, yeah. Initiate with God. That, that's a responsibility that I think the Bible gives us. Yeah. And all of us know what it's like to feel wanted. Yeah. All of us also know what it feel, feels like to be neglected. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and just not that we're reducing God to human terms, but we're made in the image of God. And so there's there's likenesses there. And just as I really appreciate if my uh, wife initiates, you know, contact with me or fellowship with me or, hey, I want to spend time with you. I, I appreciate that. God does the same thing. He's not a reluctant friend. As you said, he's pursuing us. He's not a reluctant friend, but he loves that drawing near. He loves when his children say, Lord, <laughs> I need you today. Lord, I want to spend time with you today. And uh, I mentioned on Sunday that the, the old timers, I remember hearing them they talk about practicing his presence and, and just trying to get used to this idea that God is with me, God is near me, God is interested in, in what I'm interested in. Uh, today, our son Matthew couldn't get his car started. You know, and I, I just, it was just second nature to me. I, I ran home to check out what was going on. And as I'm walking toward the car, I said, Lord, help me figure this out. And, and it wasn't that I, I stopped and lit a candle or had a ceremonial prayer. I was just talking to him like I would talk to anyone else, you know. And I got in the car and he helped me figure it out. And three seconds later, it was started, you know. Yeah. But just, I was thankful because I don't always do that. I don't always have that, but I have been walking with the Lord long enough that, you know, I know his presence is there. And when I need him, especially getting a car started, I need him. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just talking to him as that second nature, just practicing his presence. Yeah. Uh, any other insights on, on just learning to cultivate this relationship? Yeah, you know, um, one, one of the things that I believe that I have learned uh, to help me stay near to Christ is like we have to honor Jesus um, as king, right? So honor the understood and inferred expectations of the relationship. Um, so what, for me, what this means is, um, yes, I have this beautiful ability to approach Jesus as my friend, as a friend that sticks closer than a brother. But as Mr. Brandon approaches his, his best friend, Jesus, um, Jesus is also holding all things together by the word of his power in yeah. that moment as the king of the universe. Yeah. So I'm, I'm approaching him as a friend, but he is the king of the universe. And so this has kind of multiple, multiple implications. So first is, wow, how humbling and exciting that this, that this man is my best friend. He loves yeah. me so much. He died for me. He's, he's wanting to be a friend of mine. But also he has this incredible power. So it causes me to come humbly and be incredibly grateful 
but also it sets a tone for the relationship. So John 15, 14, and 15, Jesus said, you're my friends if you do what I command you. Yeah. <laughs> I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I have learned from my father I have made known to you. So there's this beautiful thing where Jesus said, um, yeah, I, have, I want to share my father's wisdom and business with you, um, and, and I'm going to call you friends if we can do this together. Mm -hmm. So we have to make space in our life uh, to work with Jesus as a friend because if someone's your friend, you have common interests, yeah. and, you're, and you're willing to share your burdens with them, and you're willing to allow them to share their burdens with you. And so I think Jesus is looking for that give and take. Say, so, yeah, yes, be my friend, but yes, come alongside me and labor for my father yeah. while it is yet day. So, so, so for me anyway, it's a, it's a matter of joining Jesus in what he's doing. And then I find an intimacy that develops kind of a natural friendship then out of that working together. Same as I've grown closer to David and you and Chris through by working together, friendship has blossomed out of that. Yeah. Yeah, our friendship with God doesn't erase our reverence for God. Yeah. You know, Psalm 25, I have to believe it's 14, says friendship with the Lord is reserved for those who fear him. So those are not contradictory truths. They're simultaneous truths. We get to be the friends of God, and Amen. that is awesome. Yeah. But at the same time, he's still God. Yeah. <laughs> and Jesus reminds us of that when he says, yes, you're my friends. Yes, I'm going to share kind of this inside information with you, yeah. but obey me. <laughs> he mm -hmm. reminds us this holy reverence, this holy fear. What happens in our natural relationships, and it happens to all of us, happens in friendships, happens in marriage, is we become familiar with one another, and sometimes that familiarity leads to this, this almost being over casual, you know, it, it almost like sometimes we'll talk to our spouse the way we wouldn't talk to the, the, the clerk at the store, Yes, you know, and that's something that we, we never want to get to in our relationship with God. Amen. Yes, how humbling and how awesome it is that, that we can be the friends of God but yet in that statement, we've just said, we just declared his kingship, his lordship, and our uh, responsibility to obey what he has, has called us to do. But what I found is like when I obey God, it, I, I never do it in a way that like, like that separates me from God. Or, or like, well, I've obeyed him, and, and in that obedience, I'm, I'm subservient, and then he's way out there and distant. No, obedience brings a new level of fellowship, yes. a new level of friendship. Yes. And it's like God throwing his arm around you and saying, thank you, son. Thank you, daughter, for hearing my voice and obeying me. And now we are accomplishing my mission here on this earth, like you said, in that, that, that partnership with the Lord. Yes. There's nothing like realizing that God is actually using you to help bring about his will on this earth. It's it, the the most rewarding spirit experiences I've ever had is just knowing that God has used me to do to impact something or someone for for his glory or in a deep way, in a way that's profound and has eternal lasting ramifications. Um, but, you know, so moving into this r relationship with Jesus as the king of the universe and working alongside of him, it does. It, it, it creates a, a, a space for him to reward us. The Bible says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yes. And the reward uh, many times is, is it can be very natural things that God decides to bless us with, and it can be spiritual things, but the greatest reward is him. Yeah. I, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek what? Him. him. Well, if you're seeking him, what's the reward? The reward is him. Yeah. You know, so it's just this idea of seeking him, wanting to be there for him, joining him in the things that he's concerned about today, and then understanding that as a result, he, we get to be just the receivers of the benefits of knowing his presence. Yeah. So some of the things we've talked about in cultivating this relationship with God, practicing his presence, 
Uh, I mentioned Sunday, honesty brings intimacy. Just being honest with God, however you feel at the moment, whatever your emotions are. You don't have to, you don't have to, you know, <laughs> CDC says it wears a mask, but wear a mask. But you don't have to put on a mask with God. Right. Just totally open before him, uh, sharing your praise, but also sharing your pain. I mean, he's the greatest counselor in the world, right? The Holy Spirit is even called our counselor. So that honesty with God brings intimacy. You mentioned obedience. Um, that's going to bring us closer and closer to God. Uh, Sunday, we also mentioned watching our diet, um, you know, the things we ingest, whether it's TV, radio, books, what we read, what we see, what we hear. All those things are either going to stir up our affections for God yeah. or diminish them. You know, it's just, it's just the way it is. And then I love what you're bringing up today, these godly friendships, getting around some other people who are walking in the same direction as you are, sharing the same vision. You, you, they, they stir you up. They're just like, I just know some people, man, every time I'm around them, hey, there's our flies. <laughs> I, I want to be more like Jesus, you know. I also know some people that, hey, every time I'm around them, uh, my hunger for God is diminished. So I got to make the right choices. So James talks about a friendship with God, with God, but he also talks about friendship with the world. And that's where we're going to go this upcoming Sunday because we live in this world. Many of us work for this world. We interact with the world all day long. So how do we, he said, James says, if you're going to become a friend of the world, it actually makes you an enemy of God. So we're in this really complicated relationship with the world. But Sunday we're going to dig deep into Scripture, going to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. How do we manage this relationship between, you know, living in the world but not conforming to the world? And uh, I'm looking forward to to being back in the Word of God. Uh, You know, every Sunday you and Carol and your whole team do a great job of ministering to our kids. And for parents then that aren't up there, or maybe they, uh, you know, there are families here that, that don't have kids. Uh, they don't know what's happening up there in, in kids' church. Yeah. Give them a little taste. What, what do you guys do up there? How are you finding ways to get the Word of God in the hearts of our kids? All right, great. Well, thank you for that opportunity. Um, yeah, in our, what we call our new youth building, which would be our old sanctuary and yeah. building up there, um, we've got a lot of space now for the kids to enjoy, but where, where previously where we were kind of jammed into <laughs> just one unit, we've got the whole building now, so we've got a lot of space for ki- to engage with kids, to worship God, to study His Word. Um, we've got a large group gathering that happens with 5 to 12-year-olds where we pray uh, together, we worship God, we kind of do our offering and announcements, and then we, we divide off, and the, and the 5 to 8-year-olds get a more a drilled down application of the bottom line for the day, okay. as do the preteens. We're, we're, we have a great space for the three- and four-year-olds up there. Nice. Uh, we're, we're, we're constantly developing this kind of indoor playground space. You know, I say that uh, nursery-age kid mamas don't want to let go of nursery-age kids, yeah. and then the three- and four-year-olds don't want to let go of mama. <laughs> and so we're, we're working to create a space there for three- and four-year-olds that they get really excited to come and engage and play with each other. But then we've got a, we've got a whole list of great volunteers um, who love the three- and four-year-olds. So uh, that's a great space up there for your pre-K kids. Yeah. Um, we're ministering the Word of God using the Orange Curriculum, um, which is giving us a bottom line for each Sunday that feeds a monthly theme. Mm. And uh, moving into the month of February, I believe, oh, you put me on the spot. <laughs> I think we're doing, oh, we're, we're learning how to encourage one another. Okay. Um, throughout the month of February. It kind of fits on just the, what we're this, talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, this, yeah. this is throughout all of the age groups, um, learning to encourage one another. Also want to encourage parents to check out the Parent Q app. It's a so, great app for your phone. It's totally free. Yeah. And it will keep you up to date with everything that's going on in Kids Church, really. Correct. So the, so the, the Orange Group has created this uh, entire family ministry approach um, that is – so Orange is – the light of the world being yellow, the church, the love of the home being red, 
Uh, and when you blend those two together, you get orange, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so the idea is to mix church and home as much as possible. So the Parent Cue is an app on your phone that will give you cues throughout the day and, and feeds you right there on your phone the same weekly content that your kids are getting on Sunday. So it gives you the opportunity to develop conversations around the content so the child can be reminded on Monday what they learned in church on Sunday, yeah. and you can actually keep that conversation going throughout the week. And trust me, if if parents uh, continue to um, feed children with the same things they're learning on Sunday, and that becomes a month-long theme, not just four Sundays a month, yeah. but throughout the whole month, every one of these principles is going to be cemented, I believe, in the child's heart and in their mind um, if we can make this happen together. So parents, check it out. Parent Q app. Um, I have an email coming out pretty soon to all the families in the church with a link to this one in case you have trouble finding it. Okay. But Parent Q app, check it out, parents. Yep. We'll talk about it a little more on Sunday as well. We're looking forward to this week, two services, 9 and 11. As we said, full kids ministry. We've got a great nursery in the new building. If you haven't been to the new building yet, come and check it out. We would love to have you here. We're going to worship God together and uh, just grow deeper and deeper in this uh, relationship. Amen. B. Hutz, thanks for being with me today. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day.